Hello everyone, welcome back to Alisa Lifestyle Vlog. So in today's video, we are going to discuss the most asked question from new teachers, which is classroom management. Many teachers, pagdating nila dito, ang una-una nilang naging problema is classroom management. Paano ba ito? Paano ba ako maka-survive even for the first day or for the first week? So, I am here to help you out. I was also in the same situation as you are. And when I came here, it was also nerve-wracking and you don't know if you're gonna make it. But you are here. There is a purpose that you are able to surpass all the challenges. And this is another challenge that you can absolutely conquer. Alright, so um, if you like this video, please stay tuned. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. tips for your classroom management okay so these management tips really helped me a lot as a teacher it's my seventh year already and every year I have struggled on how to manage my class um, but these management tips that I'm gonna share with you really helped me to end the year successfully so the first tips that I want to share is routines and procedures this is a very important the very first thing that you need to do on your first day and on your first week is setting up your routines and procedure. So that involves the rules in the classroom. So in my class, I, I have been using the whole brain teaching um, approach and they have provided rules there. And the rules are very child friendly, especially if you are teaching in primary. Um, there are some actions that you can do. You don't really need to follow the entire program. You can do it one step at a time just like what I'm doing. So I'm adapting the rules because I like it. And also, um, there are so many other approach they do for classroom management. Visit their website for more information. Again, I mentioned about rules in the classroom. So that's part of the routines and procedures. Make sure that during your first day, you can sit down with the students and before you even tell them these are our rules, um, make sure that you also ask them what do you think um, a good student do in the classroom or what does a good classroom looks like. So by, by asking them, you are giving them the opportunity to share what they think. They have the sense of ownership so that they will follow these rules because they are the one who help you set it up. So this is very important. And aside from rules, your procedures in your classroom, how do you want students to tell you if they need something in your classroom, if they need to go to the bathroom, if they need to answer, if they need to pass their paper? How does it look like when you want them to um, form a group or to go to the carpet or to do your work or to submit their homework so these things should be laid out in clear picture even lining up especially for elementary teachers lining up should be practiced um three times a day so yun ang naging problema ng mga teacher kasi sobrang excited nila mag start ng lessons agad so, nag nagkakaroon ng alam na maraming problema along the way because the foundations are not laid out properly. So, yung rules and procedures mo, yung routines mo will help you get a smooth classroom um, experience. So, make sure na um, klaro yan, okay? So, you can always um, make some anchor charts so that every time that you think that your students are forgetting the routines, you can just show it, okay? Remember, these are our routines and procedures. So you can practice again and again. It doesn't stop from the first week, even on the second week. 
um, even after a break so you can still practice that after uh, setting up your routines and procedures and na uh, practice nyo siya and the students already know ah ganito pala dapat dito dapat ilagay yung mga papel yung homework and alam na nila kung ano ang expectation na kailangan nilang gawin in the classroom the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure to provide engagement strategies Okay, so one thing you need to understand na dito sa US, hindi siya uso dito yung teacher-centered na you're gonna discuss, then you're gonna listen, um, and you're gonna test them, and that's it. Hindi ganun. So, 15 minutes lang siguro you are allowed to teach um, in whole group, teaching them ano yung objectives for today, ano yung concept for today. But after that, you should provide engagement strategies that would let them um, understand um, the lessons by collaborating with their peers. So, Kagan is a very great strategies for this. I just had my trainings and I can't wait to um, implement it in my classroom. But even without Kagan before, I was doing a lot of engagement strategies by doing collaboration with other students, um, doing small group, doing center stations. So marami nagsasabi sa akin, ano ba yung center stations? When you say center stations, basically you are providing different meaningful activities for your students that they can work in a group. So depende yan sa'yo. Ang very first thing yung gagawin mo is you need to make your groups. So, ang making groups pa lang, dapat mayroon ka ng proper na rules na finafalo. Gusto mo ba homo sila or gusto mo ba hetero? Meaning, yung may highly proficient, may proficient, may minimal and partially. So that, um, parang at least um, sharing your responsibilities, they could learn from each other. Hindi pwede nga puro lang yung highly proficient, puro lang yung minimally proficient. Hindi pwede ganun. So, uh, make sure that you set up your teams properly. And after you set up your teams, then you will think of different activities that you can create. For example lang, if you want them to really be good in their writing, so you need writing station wherein they could um, respond to a respond to a story, my, my story, and then they will write, draw something about the story and write something about it. It depends on what standards that you're working on on the writing. Meron ding reading, reading station, meron ding um, phonic station because even if Nasa third and fourth grade na yan sila, they still need to have their phonics. Um, make sure that they review it. Um, if, for lower grades, importante yung phonics because that's how they read. Um, you can have your technology centers. So dito naman, may mga laptops naman yung mga bata. So yung group na to, they're gonna use the computer to learn about your lesson or the standards that you're working on. So bali, different stations yan na they're gonna, the students gonna rotate. And as a teacher, what you're gonna do is you're gonna um, be in your small table wherein you're gonna call students in small groups. So when you're calling students, ganun, um, sa, sa situation na yon is homo na siya. So meaning yung mga minimally proficient, tatawagin mo sila, maximum of five students, and you are going to work on the standard that they have been struggling and they have not mastered because your goal at the end of the year na sila lahat nasa proficient level as much as possible. Kung mayroon bang na highly proficient, that's be even better, di ba? So, but you need to make sure na maturo mo talaga yung standards and you cannot teach all the standards talaga when you're doing whole group. You should always do a small group instruction because that's the only way you can attend to the individual needs of your students. <music>of your engagement strategies engagement strategies are so many you can do um rally robin you can do rally coach these are the things that i've been learning in my kagan training and this is just something that the students will be talking um alternate with each other or with a group and by doing this students are involved in the learning process so to make your classroom as effective as engaging as possible you need to involve the students you need to make sure that they are working they are standing they are talking about your lesson not just they are not, they're not just listening it should involve talking sharing thinking
So that is your engagement. So kung meron ka ng routines and procedures, meron ka ng engagement strategies, and most of your students are really following. So at this point, okay ka na, right? But at the but you will still see one or two students who are not really following. That is common and that is expected, okay? So meron pa ding mga dalawa, tatlo, hindi talaga makakastil follow. Now, what will you do? What is the last step? You need to have a behavior monitoring. It could be as simple as an anecdotal record wherein you will monitor the behavior. The most important thing you need to know is what is triggering the behavior? What makes the child behave like this? What is pushing her or him to hurt other kids or not to listen to your lessons. So you need to take note of those things and you need to take note of the date and the consistency, the how many times in a day, how many times in, in the morning. Um, by doing that, you will have a data that you can present, of course, to the parents first because they should also be aware of the behavior problem. Hindi pwede ikaw lang talaga mag-carry ng burden because you need the parent. That's why effective communication with the parents is, is a must. Now, um, after the parents, if hindi pa din kaya, um, you can call on the help of the guidance counselor or the behavior tech in your school. So, meron naman yan. So, and the first thing they will ask is your data. Dapat may ma-provide ka na, oh, ganito yung behavior niya and it's been consistent and it's disrupting her le her learning. So, I, I need your help. So, by having this data, by having behavior monitoring tool, um, people can help you. And they will help you, okay? This is the one thing that's good here. You're not gonna be alone here. And there are lots of staff that gonna be helping you, giving you support. And even parents, if they're just, if you're just effectively communicating to them, they're gonna help you as well. So those three things will really help you um, have a very good classroom management. And I hope that um, in this video, I was able to give you some tips on how you can um, make your year um, bearable and I know it is easy to say than done but you can do it alright you can do it um, lahat ng mayayari this year are your learning experience okay that will improve you as a teacher as an educator so thank you so much for watching this video and i hope that you keep on watching and supporting my channel please share my videos to your friends who are still dreaming to come here in the usa so let them message me or um, find me in filipino teachers unite in usa facebook groups and alisa lifestyle vlog facebook page i'm always there thank you so much everyone till my next video bye